What's that? The, is there any way this outlet in the front of the room can stay free? Uh, um, well, I don't, uh, I don't have an extension for it. Uh, no, I, I don't know if it's all useful. Peace 
hear me? Maybe. Yes. Yes? We did the sound check. Great.
sleep at night over audio, feel pretty good about my mics, feel pretty good about the stuff, I leave, lose sleep over visuals. So I am about to do, I'm about to attempt, I'm about to try to perform the most difficult part of my show. Please bear with me while I do this incredibly difficult visual task. Swipe down, look left, swipe, 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 find the mouse, click green button, click here, slide, 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 back there, find able and click, drag, 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 find green, find green, click, click, open, scroll down, close that, swipe, 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 stand up, turn smile. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is inside Stan, and I use a program called Ableton Live to do what I do, and it's 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 called a DAW, a digital audio workstation, and I imagine that some of you have seen this before. Uh, the special thing about Ableton is the session view, and we are able to do a lot of things in a timeless way. We don't read music from left to right all the time in Ableton, so we have a lot of different ways we can control things. Uh, so I want you to take a look up there. What uh, You've all been on YouTube and seen those folks who, they play guitar, I don't know why my guitar's up here. You play guitar for four bars, and then you play drums for four bars, and then you play uh, the rubber duck for four bars, and it all layers together like Shrek's favorite fruit, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and I do that, and I love that type of work, but it, it kind of, you can get a little simple when you're doing that type of work. So, I use this technique called IAC driver MIDI looping, now you're all asleep, and I, I'm able to get to really small loops, which helps me add a ton of complexity. So if we take a look here, I have this more traditional left to right view that we see in Ableton, I promise this isn't a lecture. So, when we're in this normal place, we can fill these boxes with sound and then we can click on them and they will play those sounds. And by nature of the cube, we can play them in any configuration, which allows us to do incredible things. This is all controlled in this wonderful red place labeled control. And if we go from left to right, you can see I have these little red bricks. And all those little red bricks have bits of MIDI data that Stan reads and goes, oh, in this second, I'm supposed to listen to Brian and record what he's doing and then stop doing this other time I was listening and then play this other thing that I heard earlier. And we go through, and there are many of these triggers. And we go from left to right, and that's how we write a tune. So just to give you a context of how uh, significant some of these pieces are, I'm going to zoom out. So you see, I've basically written a small barcode for some of these pieces, which enables me to do incredibly complex things. So I'm going to do a piece for you now called First Takes Number Four, which uses this technique and only this technique. There's no sound preloaded into stand right now. This is, this is real life. And I, uh, if you are someone with constitution that makes you anxious or uncomfortable when seeing uh, little yellow boxes, uh, pre please look away. Thank you. 
like stand cam, I can come up here and see a grid pattern just like you see up there. Which lets me do a ton of things. So I, I, I went to a show, um, this was a show in Melbourne actually, and someone told me, they raised their hand at the end of the show, and they accused me basically of this having been faked, right? And I was fortunate enough to have an audio engineer in the back working that show. And he very loudly and quite rudely uh, yelled out, you know, it'd be way harder to fake that than to do it live. So just to kind of show you that this is real life, I wanted to play for you. Uh, first takes number four, you saw it was the same file, uh, just played slightly differently. Anyone who, is, who knows anything about brass playing knows that I cannot do that consistently. So, uh, first takes number four with a little bit of adjustments. Who remembers a couple of minutes ago when I did the most difficult thing in the show? I am now going to attempt to try to do this backwards. <laughs> I don't have the lyrics. I'm gonna play the scroll, 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 wrong way. Scroll, 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 click, scroll, put it, da 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 da, click, boom, da 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 da, maximize, button B. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to perform for you the Richard Strauss first concerto in E flat for Val Torn. I hope you enjoy it.
Wait a minute. We didn't talk about the rules. We were supposed to do the rules at the top of the show. It's okay. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please stop. How else will the audience know what to do? Chamber music fans here? Chamber music fans? So, you know, when you're in a chamber group, you have to compromise. You have to work together. Uh, chamber music, for those of you who are not initiated into our building, is uh, the smallest uh, form of group playing. So we have major orchestras next door and big bands and jazz groups and all that. Chamber music is uh, probably debated on when it starts, but typically less than, you know, seven or eight players when you don't need a conductor to do things small groups. And these groups are wonderfully intimate and great to work in, uh, but you have to really, just like a marriage, you have to figure out how to work together. And I am in a little chamber group of my own, and Stan wants to do the rules of the game. So this is a tune that I had not expected to play. Um, Justin, is it gonna be okay to do rules of the game? ruined the, the top of house. Um, so I'm going to do this tune. Um, I hope you like it. It's called The Rules of the Gig. Um, it's really something Stan broke. So I hope you enjoy it. attending this event. I have become self-aware of the fact that I have not gone over some expectations for this performance. So let's take a moment to go over the, the rules, rules of the game. <laughs>
row can include tomatoes, tomatoes, your chair, your neighbor's chair, an empty chair, coconuts, books, or your firstborn child. Audience members are permitted to throw money, but paper books are preferred. But the change in the paper bill it makes the paper bill go further.
right? There's me, there's Sam, and there's you all. And you have a pretty good, clear job, and you've done great so far. Your job is to sit there and have showed up, and great job. And we covered some other things. Please don't barbecue, please don't throw things at me. Uh, please, you know, don't commit treason. There's a, there's a lot of things that you're supposed to do, but basically, in seriousness, your job is to sit there and try your best, right? There's this, there's all sorts of stuff. If I had walked in here, not said anything, and just played, walked in, didn't bow, and went, Vacation to Hawaii. You plan a big vacation because 
I've been outside here. You want to go to Hawaii, don't you? You, you go, you, you, you're walking under a coconut tree in Waikiki or whatever. A coconut falls and hits you at the internet opportune time. That's not like, oh, my day is ruined or my afternoon is different. You have to go home. Like, you have some serious decisions you have to make if you got hit by a coconut. These are heavy, and they fall from great distance. And, like, there's no, there's no public awareness campaign. There's no one trying to eradicate the, the coconut. There's just some idiot horn player on stage complaining about them. There's nothing that's being, and they're so arrogant. They're, oh, they're so arrogant. Folks, so I'm on an international tour. And I, when I decide to go on tour, I have to buy a plane ticket. I need to be searched. I need to go through agricultural inspection, forcing a poor doctor from uh, William Patterson University to buy the next coconut because I couldn't get it through the first one. Do you think the TSA likes this? <laughs> the TSA hates this. And therefore, I hate this. Look at this thing. The TSA hates it. They're like, what's this? I'm going to lose this mute that when I put them into my French horn and live electric, and they're gone. And, um, so, like, they're so, they make me so mad. Because like, I go through all this stuff to go on these tours, and coconut, they just fall off a tree, and they roll into the ocean, and they float. Fiji, Africa, Australia. They don't care. Nobody's looking for them. Think about the ocean. The ocean is the most dangerous place in the world. Everybody's trying to kill each other in the ocean. Coconuts don't care, they just float. They do all the, I, I'm like shaking, I'm so upset. I, I, look, <laughs> folks, I think coconuts are the scourge, awful, miserable demons of the universe. I wrote this tune about it. It's called The Arrogance of Coconuts. It's about how free and light and happy they must feel while they go about their
played at a school and I like, I like got a little too much juice on it and it like ramped and like made it quite far and like completely opened and they were not very pleased with me. <laughs> Any creators here? A couple of people, like people who um, doing writing, composing, uh, public speaking, uh, videoing, videoing, video game making, uh, film stuff like that. It's not very easy, is it? Um, and I have obviously done quite a bit of creating, hoping that it would get easier. Um, and I, I used to go to this beach in Hawaii where I was living, and I would go on these walks and kind of think about stuff. Uh, the beach I was going to was really great. It's called Castles. It was great because the number one tourist beach in the world is in Hawaii two miles that way from where I was. So everybody was over there, and I was out there walking alone, and I used to kind of go and like kick rocks, mad about stuff, and I was frustrated that I was trying to write at the time, like the piece that would launch my career and put porn and electronics on the map, and I'd meet Michelle Obama, and it'd be this incredible thing, and you know, I'd just be mad, like, why can't I think of whatever it is? And in my mind, I'm kicking, like, fields of coconuts. Like, why can't I think of what it is? And it, it's just like, when you think about it, when you stop and kind of take yourself out of that, it's really kind of stupid, isn't it, to think that way? Because that's not really how anyone thinks creativity should work. Like, if we go put a bunch of effort into, like, a walk, we'll be able to come back. And I, I was just thinking, you know, I, I wish that we could take sort of the achievement of creativity out of it sometimes. Even though that's a really helpful driver, it just kind of made, it was making me feel gross and that pressure wasn't helping. So I spent a long time thinking about that and I went home and wrote this tune kind of with that mindset. It, it's just a song, uh, it uses simple loopers um, called My Beach.
it's called hashtag no filter. And it's sort of an extension of that feeling. Um, you ever feel like people aren't real? Like if you go get an email or you take a phone call and it feels like you're the only person alive. Um, this seems kind of about that and trying to sort of work out behind it 
is that people would go to a beautiful mountain place or a sunset and they'd take a picture with their iPhone and they would post it with no filter, with no editing. And they would go on their post and they would uh, do the hashtag, no filter. And the implication there was that it was somehow more honest having not done that. But that's kind of problematic for a couple of ways. So the first way is that it's not actually true. So algorithmic photography, we actually just had a great discussion about AI in arts today, and we, we didn't cover photography. We covered it, we touched on it. But the photos in iPhones have gotten so good, and Androids as well, that they've seen hundreds and millions of sunsets. And they've put in real editors to edit the photos and teach these cameras what they want. And what the iPhones can do nowadays is they take a picture of a sunset and they say, bright white dot in the center of the screen, flat thing, a bunch of red and yellows, that's a sunset. I've seen that before. And it knows what to do. It takes, uh, it lowers the highlights. It uh, makes the shadows have more contrast. It lowers the exposure all the way and it adds saturation to the reds and the oranges. And that's how you get this beautiful photograph. Uh, because you, cameras have to interpret the colors and you have this computation that's happened and it's really quite nice. But to say that there's no filter on a photo like this is, is sort of not true. Yeah, because you've taken the photo and then it's been filtered. Now, the other problem with that is it kind of disrupts the idea of hashtag no filter being more authentic and therefore better, kind of disrupts the art making process. Because filtering is akin to editing and is akin to more and more things. And it's really part of the artistic process, right? We've been talking about creativity up here. And I, I just, it bums me out when people write that because the implication is you don't need to do any editing. Uh, folks, do you know how many edits what I'm saying to you right now went through? It's quite a few times that I have edited this particular thing that I'm saying to you right now. Uh, and, and the reason I'm making this point is because it just, it, it bums me out when, you know, I don't like being sad, and if I'm gonna get a platform, I'm gonna lecture you all about it. It, it just bums me out when we, when we say this stuff because I just don't want people to feel like having filtering, you know, anyone knows, who knows anything about horn playing knows that this does not sound very good straight out of the microphone. If you're recording, there's recorders up there. Like, it does not sound very good. And I do filtering and processing so that when it, the loops come through to you, it sounds a little better. That's just part of what Stan and I do, and I just don't want you to get the impression that filtering is some kind of lying, cheating scandal where less art happens. I just want you to acknowledge that the editing process is part of it. So there's no lying here, no cheating here. So we can continue with the tune with that in mind. So thanks for hearing me out on that. It has a filter, it's a lie.
leave it behind. Pushing each other to leave where we're comfortable. We can find what we're best at and do it together. Let's keep it simple.
appreciate you being out here. Um, if we, I, I don't know, I don't remember, we didn't talk about a q &A. If anyone has any questions, if like you were all burning for questions, you can like raise your hands and I'll, we can talk some about art and what this was. Um, if you'd rather uh, keep it cash, um, I know that wasn't the vibe of the show, uh, but you can totally come out and uh, speak to me. There are a couple of other events as part of this residency uh, with the William Patterson Bands. I am doing another show called Picture This. That is the one that got nominated for Best mi uh, uh, Music at the uh, Melbourne Fringe Festival. That is at, um, on Saturday at 2 o'clock. <laughs> and um, I'm doing a master class tomorrow at 3.30 with the, uh, some of the amazing players uh, that I've already gotten some time to work with here. And there is an open Q&A session that you can either sign up for or uh, we'll figure it out. That is on Thursday at... Gosh. Um, at gosh. Uh, about it. Yeah, and we are uh, really doing the best we can to get the word out. Algorithm, algorithmic social media has made it very difficult to do messaging. So if you are interested in further events, subscribe to email lists, subscribe um, to people, like write to them and say, hey, can you tell me when things are on? It is so much easier to do that nowadays because your um, Instagram feeds will not show you the people that you follow necessarily today in 2024. Um, but thank you so much. I really appreciate your time for coming out. Uh, please uh, have stay safe and dry as you go out into a really wonderful state. Yeah, it's quite...